In this COVID-19 era, many Ghanaians have seen the need for a financial fallback plan. If you're looking to improve your financial situation or need reliable information to make sound financial decisions, join the Access Money Show, a weekly interactive session hosted by Access Pension Trust. On Access Money, we feature industry experts to cover various personal finance topics and share the success stories of sound investment decisions. Access Money, Wednesdays at 9.30 a.m. on Sunny FM. Access Pension Trust, your reliable partner in pensions. Hello everyone, welcome to the Access Money Show. It's an interactive program where we talk about personal finance and retirement planning related topics. This program is proudly brought to you by Access Pension Trust, a private leading pension provider. My name is Mimi and I'll be your host for today. April has been set aside as Financial Literacy Month. And to mark this event and raise awareness, we will be having a discussion about financial literacy in Ghana and its importance to the general well-being of the average Ghanaian. To help us with this discussion, we have with us here two distinguished guests. We have Dr. Benjamin Amwa. He's a senior lecturer of the University of Ghana Business School, Department of Finance. He is also the coordinator for Financial Awareness Association, University of Ghana. We also have here with us Prince Yako, he's the executive member of CFLE Africa. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Before we continue this discussion, let's take a break from our sponsors. And when we come back, we'll delve straight in. The beginning of the new year presents an opportunity for you to assess and review your retirement plan. Will your projected retirement benefits be enough to meet your desired retirement lifestyle? There's a lot you can do this year to improve your retirement prospect. Here are some of the tips you can consider. Review your retirement fund statement. If you should maintain the same retirement savings strategy, Will you be able to achieve your retirement income goals? Take advantage of the Tier 3 Provident Fund and the Personal Pension Scheme. The Tier 3 is a tax-efficient way of saving for your retirement. Avoid withdrawing from your pension funds prematurely, as you might miss out on long-term benefits of compound interest of your funds. Pension advisors are available at Axis to guide you to improve your retirement prospects. Visit our website to learn more. Axis Pension Trust your reliable partner in pension. <laughs> uh -huh, Auntie Mary, give me for four, 10 cities, Willie, six cities, goat's meat, a papo, 12 cities, and chicken ties, fat one, eight cities. Okay, right away. Sauce connect, payday is good. Art will be a one wife. In the hustle and bustle of life, retirement oh, considerations year, are often relegated to the bottom of our collective financial agenda until retirement hits you unprepared. Living on a meagre retirement income can be traumatic and stressful as you can no longer afford to live life the way you want. Can I have Fufu 50 pesos, goat meat 1 CD and chicken thighs small 50 pesos? Hey, please we don't sell our dunle and our chomo here. Oh. Go to the next door. Hey, I do ya wow. Welcome back. Remember, this program is proudly brought to you by Agnes Pension Trust, your reliable partner in pensions. Welcome, Doc, and welcome, sir. Thank, Thank you. As we already mentioned, we are going to be talking about financial literacy today, its importance in the life of the average Ghanaian. The Access Money team went to the streets of Accra to find out answers to these questions. Name three types of investments you know. How does compound interest work? And this is what they had to say. The three types of investments I know are fixed deposits, mutual funds, and uh, bonds. Yeah. Compound interest, I think uh, it is the, the money you accumulate or the interest you, ac you accumulate over time. Um, for example, maybe you're investing in uh, a bank and 
in a month you get like three percent so with all the months and all the interest you gain per those times that you've given your money in as investment together when it's accumulated that's what your compound interest that's what i understand by it like the three types of investment um, savings accounts current accounts treasury bills and probably fixed deposits i know of um treasury bills I also know of um, wealth creation and then um, wealth master. Okay, my understanding of compound interest, when um, you take a loan, the interest that is being added to the principal, that's what I know to be compound interest. Amazing responses, weren't they? Yeah. So, um, Doc, what do you have to say about some of the responses we heard? Uh, thank you very much. The responses are interesting. And revealing it is says that with so many years of formal education i will have expected that there will be some level of attention given to finances and to be specific personal financial management you can clearly see from the response that we call here that the basic understanding to the questions are missing in terms of the responses we had from your respondent the issue of the type of investment brings into focus the fact that many individuals out there have no clear understanding of what investment is and in particular what financial investments are. I heard somebody talking about savings, current account, treasury bill, and then fixed deposit. Clearly, current account does not qualify to be an investment. What comes close and what is investment in the examples he gave are the treasury bill, which is a money market short term investment. And then we can talk about the fixed deposit, which is also a money market short term investment. Current accounts, savings accounts are what we call emergency funds that are set up to manage day to day needs. And that does not fit the description of what investment is and what an investment product is. So the advice is that as an individual, you need to have two types of account. You need to have what you call a savings account, a current account, which is just for your day-to-day -day living expense and emergency needs. You have to go one step up to have what you call an investment plan or an investment account where you have specific investment or financial market investment to meet your investment objectives. So two things, savings is different from investment. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, Mr. Yanko, um, Doc spoke about the accounts, mm -hmm. but something that was mentioned was also what compound interest is. What did you um, pick up from the responses that were given? All right, thank you very much, Mimi. And thank you, Doc, for a, a wonderful explanation. Um, I heard from the audio about somebody's definition on compound interest. And I think um, the first definition was something quite close to what really compound interest is. And uh, I'll say that normally when we are investing, um, the number of interest you are getting on our money, if let's say you are getting 50 CDs on your money, if you don't withdraw this 50 CD and the 50 CD is reinvested into your investment pool, it means that the interest now you are going to earn on that amount is going to be higher than just the previous one. So compound interest is you allowing your investment, the interest you are getting from your investment to be added back to the principal for you to be able to earn more interest as the duration of your investment uh, is. So for me, I think it is something that is very important that each and every individual should come to the realization that because investment it's a long-term vehicle that we seek to use to acquire wealth. Compound interest is something that is very important and you should very be mindful of when you are investing. Thank you. Thank you. So we've learned about emergency accounts. We've learned about compound interest. In simple terms, it's like having one chicken, the chicken giving birth, not eating that chicken. That chicken will also give birth, not eating that chicken. By the time you realize you have a chicken, a big chicken farm. Exactly. So basically, yeah. that's what Mr. Yako was explaining. Okay, so um, we are talking about financial literacy. I, I believe it's so important and I am a 
uh, personal finance or let me say financial literacy advocate. Um, Doc, what at all is financial literacy? Okay. Many a times we tend to confuse financial literacy with financial education and financial knowledge. But because you are focusing on financial literacy, my point is that there are differences between financial literacy, financial knowledge, and financial education. But today we are focusing on financial literacy. So basically, financial literacy is about awareness, it's about knowledge, it's about skill, it's about attitude and behavior mm -hmm. of an individual in matters relating to finance and financial management. And how these five components are used by the individual or expected to be used by the individual to improve his or her financial well-being. So we talk about awareness. As an individual, you need to understand your current condition, what your situation is, by way of your finances and then your needs. That is awareness. We then go on to talk about the knowledge. The knowledge now talks about the cognitive ability, which is the capability. I'm not talking about capacity. Capability to reason through the issues confronting you and to apply the right knowledge. Cognitive capability. And we also talk about what we call the skill. The skill is how do you go around to select from the numerous financial instruments we have on the market. Attitude is your disposition towards what you want to do. So what is your disposition? What is your natural inkling to a particular decision? And then to the behavior, how do you then respond to whatever is confronting you using finance or financial, the knowledge you have in finance to resolve that issue? to improve on your financial well-being. So, in the gist, this is what financial literacy is all about. The objective is that you should use that knowledge or literacy to improve your financial well-being. Very interesting and revealing um, definition of what financial literacy is. Um, it basically means that you can be a finance professional and still be financially illiterate. You may be aware, but you may not be. You may not have the right attitude or behavior to ap apply what you know, and that makes you financially illiterate. That's very revealing. Um, Mr. Yako, do you have anything to add to what Doug just said? Right, I think um, the Doug has already said everything. Uh, the little I can add to it is uh, uh, with financial literacy. It means that um, you want to have some form of knowledge about something. Because in our local language, we say I'm literate. It means that at least I have an understanding about a particular thing, right? Yeah. So in you relating it in the body of finance, it means you being aware of certain financial skills and certain financial knowledge that you as an individual, you can put together these things to help you make informed and effective financial decisions out of your financial resources. Because you definitely agree with me that the end goal of each and every individual out there is to be able to become financially independent. And how do you get to achieve this goal? It's true being aware of a set of skills, having the right knowledge about finances, to be able to put this together, then together you can achieve your goal at the end. Thank you. Thank you. Um, from the definition you gave, it appears a lot of us in this country are financially illiterate. So how do you measure your um whether you are financially literate or not because now it's not just about knowing what investment is so how do you measure whether you know you're in the right place or you need to do something about where you are currently in terms of your literacy levels okay so if you want to attempt to measure then we have to go back to the definition that i gave and that is the oecd definition for financial literacy Within that uh, set of financial literacy, we have two major blocks. I want to call the basic financial literacy and then the advanced form of financial literacy. The basic one tries to test an individual's understanding of simple interest, compound interest. Then we have what we call uh, inflation. We have basic numeracy skills because, see, once you are going to engage the financial market, you are going to commit resources, you need to have a little appreciation of 
If I invest this, what am I getting? Basic literacy skill. And you need to understand this concept of what we call risk management, diversification. So if you go into the OECD's toolkit, a toolkit is a questionnaire that they have, they post questions on these areas. Then the response to these questions are then added up, summed up, to gauge the individual's literacy level. Literacy level. So that is it at the basic level. Then when you go to the advanced level, they talk about stocks, you talk about uh, mutual funds, you talk about higher level diversification, and then to some extent, derivatives, etc. But the first one is measure the basic level financial literacy, and then based on that, if there are some interjections or some interventions you can do, then as an educational center, you can then you know, provide the needed intervention. But then the sad aspect is that because this is not part of our formal education, many of us will have to learn this, and we are learning this through practice and experience. When we work and we are paid salaries, then we are unleashed into the world of spending without having this basic life needed skills, what we call the lifelong skills. It is a structural problem that we have in our educational setup. And so, until you engage a financial professional who may bring your mind to some of these things, we many at times presume that individuals have it. Yeah. But strictly speaking, many individuals do not have it. And if by chance you don't also benefit from a business education in finance or in economics, the chances are that you will never have a formal setting where some of these concepts will be taught. And that means that you may not have financial literacy education or what we call financial education. And you have to navigate your world in the financial market just by learning from experience and from practice. That is how the whole thing is as we speak now. It seems to me quite terrible because the reason why we go through school, go through university, is to acquire skills to make money. Unfortunately, how to manage the money we make is something that we are not really being thought. Absolutely. And I think it's very something very important that we need to start looking at more seriously. You mentioned something about the OECD's questionnaire. Yeah. Is this something the average person can have access to, to assess their literacy levels? Yeah, that is not difficult at all. It's just a pool of questions that, you know, is available for public use. Okay. So you can download OECD financial literacy toolkit okay it's available google it and you can have the questions you can just give it out to individuals just to measure their understanding of what financial literacy is it will be, it will be revealing that you know yeah. many times we take a lot of things for granted but you realize that from a professional point of view many individuals do not have that knowledge and that skill and until we identify it and address it we we'll work and make money by then managing our finances and harnessing all the benefits, mm -hmm. where we interact or we engage the financial market, we'll not get it. Even as we engage a finance professional, you need to have some level of knowledge or education exactly. so you can glean the best from the engagement. But if you don't have, you know, you just listen to whatever he or she is saying, and you assume that what he or she is saying can improve your well-being, it is possible. But it is better if you have some level of knowledge so that the interactions you have with the finance professional can be more fruitful and beneficial to the two parties. That is something that we need to know. And it is from financial literacy that we can develop that base of knowledge. Yes. I, I totally agree with you. It helps you ask the right questions when engaging with a financial advisor so that you are able to get the best product to solve your problem exactly. because that's why you are buying the product. Uh, Mr. Yahoo, do you have um, anything to add to what Doc just said? All right. So uh, thank you, Doc, very much for that enlightenment. So um, what I would say is that um, normally as individuals, our focus is more on our earning capacity. That is the money that we are bringing home or the work that we are doing, how much we are paying us. But uh, money is just a form. It's just when they pay you, if you take 10 CD, it's just 10 CD. But what makes money more powerful is the knowledge that you have to turn this around into something else, right? So for me, I'll say that a lot of people who don't have financial 
literacy, they are very, very vulnerable when it comes to falling prey to schemes that are very fraudulent. So you see that people are wasting so much money because uh, we did a survey backwards and uh, there was an instance that people are too much focused on interest rates. Mm. But you see, interest rates is not, it's, it's a part of financial literacy, but again, you need to understand it and then its application very well, right? Yeah. And also, I would say that people who are financially literate, they understand the life goals, the various life goals that we have, ranging from um, savings, investing, financial planning towards your retirement and other key things that you as an individual, you know that definitely as you are working, there will be a period that you wouldn't work again. And how do you ensure that the period you are not working again, the livelihood that you have will still continue? So it's within the interplay of all these concepts that Doug has shared and we've spoken about that an individual can make informed decision and make know that the money that I'm earning is being put to the right use. Thank yeah. you. Okay. So why is financial literacy important? I think we've said we've said something already. Okay. But why is it important not just to the individuals, but even to the bigger economy and even to the world? Why is financial literacy so important? Though? Financial literacy is very important because, you see, we need to see financial literacy as part of the human capital development. And here we are talking about, again, back to capability. Capability of the individual engaging the financial market. You see, because it's literacy or education or knowledge, if you don't work on the cognitive aspect of the human being or the individual with the needed knowledge and skills, they will not see the importance of engaging the financial market. Or they may do that wrongly, like we've already heard from Mr. Nyako. So for the individual, if he or she is financially literate, there's evidence to show that individuals who have high-level financial literacy, when they borrow, they pay back. So if you are dealing with a pool of potential clients who are financially literate, there is high chance that you are going to have good business with them. Two, individuals who are financially literate are most likely to be financially included because they understand the workings of the financial market. The little that they make, they may want to use the financial market and the financial institutions as an avenue to create wealth. Again, and it's believed that individuals who are financially literate are able to avoid fraudulent investment schemes, etc. At the macro level, if you want to look at the importance of financial literacy, you have to think about the fact that if a nation builds a pool of citizenry who are financially literate, these citizens will save. And once they save, the nation has a pool of financial resources that they can tap in for long-term development. If you are talking about the pension sector, which is about long-term planning, then we need to think about the fact that we need to encourage individuals to plan for retirement. They can only plan and accept the responsibility to plan for retirement if they have good financial education. So once these individuals have the education, then they will save and they will invest for their retirement. Because it is long-term, these savings or these pension funds must then invest the funds for the long term. It gives the state the opportunity to tap into this pool of funds to undertake long-term investment, like building of malls, putting up high-speed trains, putting up bridges, and heavy infrastructure that can propel the nation to higher economic growth. Then, of course, last but not the least is that if you have a pool of citizenry that are financially literate, then what will happen is that these citizens will plan for their retirement. And so they don't put high demand and high cost on your social welfare initiatives when they become old. Issues of health, issues of insurance will be catered for because as part of their retirement and personal financial plan, they themselves, from the knowledge that they have, will have taken initiative to take care of themselves going forward. So when they go on retirement, they don't put excessive burden on the existing social infrastructure. That aids the state to also cut down on some of the needed resources that you have to put aside to meet some of these social needs. 
If you compare countries that have high level of financial literacy to the demand on social intervention is lower than when you compare it to countries that have low level financial literacy citizens. And if you look at the lifestyle needs, you can see that there's a stark difference because in most cases, those that are coming from high financial literacy countries plan well mm -hmm. and they tend to enjoy life better than the environment where the individuals are not financially literate. So these are my few thoughts on the benefits that we get when we invest into financial literacy. Very, very important. And what, what hit me was even the importance of this to private companies. Because if you have a company that is giving out loans, people know they have to pay. They have set up their finances in such a way that they can pay. It means that there will even be less interest on these loans because the risk is lower. There's a tendency that people will take and pay. Yeah. So it's also very important. And once people have access to cheaper finances, what happens? They can develop more businesses. Yeah. So it's like a, 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 yeah, a kind of cycle. Exactly. You know, everybody benefits from an individual being financially detached. Okay, so Mr. Yako, um, Doc has spoken about, you know, the macro economy. How about me? Why should I be financially literate? All right. So thank you very much for the question. Uh, first of all, I'll say that uh, as an individual, one thing that we must come to a realization is that money affects every aspect of our lives. So immediately we are born, we start schooling. The focus of what we are doing is to come back to the public and be employed and start earning money. So the money that we are earning, one, is determining the lifestyle that we live. It determines where we stay. It is what we use to buy the grocery. It's what we use in savings. It's what we use in financial um, planning towards our investment and all that. So it is very, very important that we possess these skills of financial literacy because, I mean, I've, I've been with people where I talk to most families with financial planning. And you realize that it's not like most Ghanaians are not earning decent income. Some are earning very good income. But the fact that they don't have financial literacy, they are wasting a lot of their financial resource. So it is very important for you to get these skills so that, first of all, the money that you are bringing home, you don't tend to waste it. You should also have these resources because at the end of the day, you will need to plan. And this planning is, as you've already said, that going into retirement. What are you going to do when you go on retirement? I get it. So, it's very important for the individual because I've met people who, because of financial literacy, that they didn't have, they've done a lot, some investment that went bad, and these people, it has having a toll on their personal life. Some have led to divorces, some have led to social vices, and others have led to so many things that, I mean, it's not the best. So not having financial literacy can be very damaging to the individual. Thank you. Very educative response. Um, the Bible says that money answers all things. So if you believe in the, the holy book, it says money answers all things. And it reminds me of a story of someone who shared how they lost a family member just because of 200 Ghana seeds. And so these things are very important. Very, it's very relevant that we know how to you know, spend our money, manage our money, save our money, um, even manage risk in our lives so that we can avoid some things that we could have done better with if we had the right knowledge. Let's take a quick break to hear from our sponsors. When we come back, we'll talk about the dangers of financial illiteracy. Uh huh, Auntie Mary, give me for four, 10 cities, Willie, six cities, goat's meat, upper pool, 12 cities, and chicken ties, fat one, eight cities. Okay, right away. Sauce connect, payday is good. Hard beer, one wine. In the hustle and bustle of life, retirement Yo, consideration. Next year are often relegated to the bottom of our collective financial agenda until retirement hits you unprepared. Living on a meager retirement income can be traumatic and stressful 
as you can no longer afford to live life the way you want. Can I have fufu 50 pesos? Goat meat, one CD, and chicken thighs, small, 50 pesos. Hey, please, we don't sell our dunle and nachomo here. Oh. Go to the next door. Hey, I do ya wow. The beginning of the new year presents an opportunity for you to assess and review your retirement plan. Will your projected retirement benefits be enough to meet your desired retirement lifestyle? There's a lot you can do this year to improve your retirement prospects. Here are some of the tips you can consider. Review your retirement plan statement. If you should maintain the same retirement savings strategy, will you be able to achieve your retirement income goals? Take advantage of the tier three provenance fund and the personal pension scheme. The tier 3 is a tax efficient way of saving for your retirement. Avoid withdrawing from your pension funds prematurely, as you might miss out on long-term benefits of compound interest of your funds. Pension advisors are available at Axis to guide you to improve your retirement prospects. Visit our website to learn more. Axis Pension Trust, your reliable partner in pension. Welcome back. Remember, this program is proudly brought to you by Axis Pension Trust, your reliable partner in pensions. Before we left, we're throwing a lot of light on the importance of financial literacy. So, Doc, what are some of the effects of financial illiteracy? If I'm financially illiterate, how does it affect my life? It will affect you in so many ways, knowingly and unknowingly. Because you see, you are, you are managing money and you are going to manage money, personal level or even if you work for someone, you are also going to be giving money to undertake an activity on behalf of the, of the organization. So your person at a personal level, if you are financially illiterate, you have bad attitude towards money management. You will not come to the recognition that money is a resource. And until you begin to realize that money is a resource, just like any other resource you can think about, land, air, water, which has to be managed prudently, you will always misuse money. And once you get money from engaging in an economic activity, then you will fall, you'll fall into the trap where you will be working and you don't see the benefits that you need to get from the money and the salary are being paid. So, financial literacy at the personal level is so important. For individuals who lack it or who do not have financial literacy, they fall into wrong investment. In other words, they waste their little resources that they have. They are not able to plan and plan their life properly. They hardly plan for their retirement. They fall into the trap thinking that they are working and they will work forever. If you are employed, the law of the land says at age 60, you have to go on retirement. So at age 60, your earnings ability will sharply decline. From that time on, you have to live on what you have accumulated and amassed during your working life. If you don't have a good knowledge or understanding of financial literacy, chances are that you will not have planned for retirement. In that case, you'll be exposed to not have enough resources to live on when you go to retirement. We can also talk about the fact that if you are financially illiterate, what it implies is that you are going to engage your financial services professionals without having the needed knowledge. So they will be sell to you because you don't understand what they are selling. You will go into bad investments and you are not going to have the best from your financial engagement. Financial literacy at a personal level is very important. Two, if you are talking about at a firm level, you know, when you are working for an organization, individuals have gotten themselves into wrong things that they've done for their organizations because of some financial pressures that they had on themselves. They had cash flow problems. And because they didn't know how to manage their cash flow problem as individuals, they got themselves into certain wrong things they did either by implicating themselves or even the organizations they work for because of those financial pressures that they had on themselves. If you are financially literate and you understand your cash flow pattern, you will have a good idea from your budgeting. When you are likely to run out of funds, what time so that you can start taking immediate measures to resolve some of these 
ahead of time, you know, financial difficulties they are going to have so that you can plan and plan properly. So these are some of the difficulties that individuals who are financially literate get themselves involved in. Doc, you spoke about planning, and for me, it reminds me of, you know, when people give birth, you know, this child will go to school. Yeah. But for some reason, I, I did my national service in a bank, and one thing I realized is during school fees time, okay. I realized a lot of people troop into the bank to take loans. But you had this child earlier. I can see that there's some lack of planning in, you know, preparing for this child. And what school will they go to? How much does the school fees cost? How can I start putting something aside so that eventually when they go to school, I don't find myself in a place where I don't have, I have to go for a loan at a certain, you know, interest rate that affects my finances and it becomes a cycle of, you know, difficult financial moments. So I think that's very important. Mr. Yako. All How right. does financial... I think you do a lot of personal consultation with yeah, individuals. Sure. So how does financial literacy cost people? I know you have so many stories. All right. So um, I engage a lot with the uh, middle income families. And uh, I'll say that for me, um, sometimes you meet them and uh, though you are there to educate them, but along the line, you get sad for them because uh, these are people from great professionals, some are bankers, some are investment people that you feel should be able to make good use of the money that they are earning, but you realize that they have not made that decision for themselves. So for me, I would say that, um, I would take it from the family level. I would say that every family that anyone comes from, the breadwinners of the family have an agenda for each and everyone in the family, right? And how are we able to propel this agenda going forward is through the decisions we make with our money. So you realize that you have families that when their father was alive, they were doing well. Money was coming because there was energy at work. But immediately the father leaves, then it means that the people's uh, dreams and aspiration come to a halt. And it shouldn't be so. So sometimes if you are financially illiterate, it means that it will be very damaging for the people that you leave. They cannot continue with your legacy, right? So. It is something that we should be very careful about. And also, um, normally people will say that um, a lot of us as Christians, we, we, we want an opportunity where God will drop some magic money be out of nowhere into our account and all that. But I always tell people that it all comes to planning. So immediately you give birth, you start planning. Immediately, everything that we are doing in life, we plan about it. So financial being financially literate is, is, is something that is very damaging to the individual. And we are using this month of April to give the awareness to people that it's very important for them to acquire these skills so that the money that they are earning can also be put to very good use. Thank you. Thank you. It reminds me of something I saw on LinkedIn. Um, somebody was sharing their story of how um, their sister's husband passed away. And within a few years, one third of his wealth was gone. Wow. And because she had left it in a savings account and wouldn't listen to any advice to invest the money so that it could sustain them for um, quite a bit. So this is very important. So we've spoken so much about what financial literacy is, the importance, the effect of not having financial literacy. So now how can I gain, how can I become financially literate? How can I gain you know, the knowledge, the skills, the awareness, the right attitude, the um, behavior. How, how can I be able to do that? That is a good question. And uh, if we want to formalize a response, then we need to go back to some of the things we teach in our schools and then have what I'll call a, a non-radical approach to insert financial education into one or two of the courses that we teach in our schools, right from the primary level to the junior level, called the pre-tertiary and tertiary levels. There should be a deliberate attempt from the policymakers to provide that space. Uh, the view is that the curriculum is congested, but I, I believe strongly that if we see financial education as something pivotal to our development as a country, then we need to create that space 
for it so that it becomes part and parcel. So as you go through school, you are exposed to some of these lifelong basic principles that we will need because whether you are taught or not, it will confront you. So that is one way of dealing with it. Those who are unfortunate, maybe our generation that never benefited from it, that's no problem. We are off. But what about those who are coming? Let's have that deliberate policy to create a space for financial education to be part of our educational curriculum. It will help us a lot and to help in mobilizing the needed resources that a country needs for development. Having said that from the educational point of view, I believe that uh, now if you look at financial inclusion rates, access to banking and access to financial services, it's all over. So if you have any form of financial product, where you are engaging your financial product provider, it is a, I see it as a responsibility of the financial services provider to also go one step. It's not just about making a deal. So it's about getting the customer coming on. As part of their corporate social responsibility, they should also set aside budgets that will also attempt to support financial literacy initiative. As we go through the month of April, financial literacy month, we'll be excited to know if we have financial institutions by themselves also declare maybe a week of financial literacy, something about financial literacy, so that they will also engage their client. This time around, not just about selling the product, but providing that human capital to that client, that group of women, that group of men that they're engaging, so that the next time around they come to buy a financial product or service, they are well informed. You don't waste a lot of time trying to convince them to buy a product. So to cut down on some of the world, the convincing that you have to do. So that is what I will say. The state Ghana has a responsibility to create the space for financial education to take place. Also, the financial institutions that play within the financial services industry should make available both financial and non-financial resources because they benefit a lot when the citizenry have a good appreciation of what financial information is and how to engage the financial market using financial information. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Uh, Ms. Ayako, what are your strategies that you would um, advise right. us to So to for me, um, Doc has spoken about the nation at large, so I will draw down on uh, our institutions and the individual. So for me, I believe institutions should take practical steps in trying to educate first their employees because they are the first point of call that they use in reaching out to the masses out there so first of all they should look at educating their employees because i believe any institution should exist and see that there's some kind of improvement in the employee's life so that you know that at least this person came to work for this institution and there's been some kind of progress in what the person is doing the person is attaining financial independence so for me, I feel the institution should, first of all, educate their employees and also from time to time, organize seminars and things to also educate their customers out there. Because I believe it should not just be about access pension selling just product. It should also be about they also being able to equip the individual with decisions and knowledge that the person will know that what I'm buying from access is indeed something that addresses a specific need that I have. And I believe when they do it like that, it will also help. And then for the individual who uh, will not be privy to some of these things, I believe we ourselves, we can also help ourselves by reading some of these personal finances books. I think we have a lot of people who have written on personal finance books that we can resort to, read them from time to time. We can also follow uh, financial experts. So LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, these are people that are gurus in personal finances and you can follow them to get to learn from them and also we have certain social campaigns that is being done in the nation so i can talk about uh, money combos it's also a platform where professionals from all works of life come together to discuss personal finances and provide financial education these are platforms that as individuals you can join to learn either than that you are going to learn financial literacy the hard way. Thank you.
Thank you. You spoke about books, so we want to just give some examples of okay. those books. Do you have any? Okay, so for me, uh, I recommend um, Nine Steps to Financial Freedom by Susie Oman. Um, I also recommend um, Common Sense by <laughs> Art William. Um, these are personal finance people who have um, defined all odds. They didn't come from rich families, but they've been able to amass great wealth and they've written books that I believe that you can go out there and also buy and it will be very important that you get it. Thank you, Mr. Yanko. Doc, I think you work with a lot of books. Yeah, thank <laughs> so you. what are some of the books? Yeah, the have? books, if you visit the financial awareness website, they have a lot of downloadables on books from the personal finance level through estate and kitchen planning. But the materials that will walk you through the entire phase or stages that you need to go through if you are thinking about how to manage your finances and how to be financially literate. Most of the materials are very relevant. And the interesting thing is that they are for free, so you don't pay anything. Uh, so visit the Financial Awareness Foundation website. Just go to Downloadables, and the books are there for your reading. Thank you so much for the book suggestions. You can also read The Richest Man in Babylon, Millionaire Next Door, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. These are very old books that still have good principles that we can apply. So let's read those books as has been suggested. And okay. um, we all are representing different organizations that will be very busy during this time. Doc, you are a representative of the Financial Awareness Foundation. What are some of the activities you'll be involved in okay. in April? In the month of April, we are going to have a series of public engagement we are going to talk about how financial literacy plays an important role as far as the management of entrepreneurial business and small business is concerned. If you want to grow your business, you need capital. And the skill set to manage the capital is hinged in personal financial management. So we believe that it's very important. We also want to engage the regulators to have a discussion on how to deal with fraudulent and what we call a uh, unapproved investment schemes that we have always bombarding us on the market. And finally, we want to have an engagement with MoMAC. MoMAC is Mobile Money Agent, Merchant, and Agency Banking. And to teach them the trends on the market and how best they can go about their business in the month of April, aside what the students and others will also be doing in the month of April. That's going to be amazing. Um, Mr. Yanko, as a representative for CFLE Africa, what are some of the activities? The month of April is uh, set aside for most of our media campaigns yeah. in educating the general public on the importance of financial literacy in every aspect of our life. So we are going to undertake uh, media campaigns, press conferences. We are also going to have webinar seminars with uh, speakers that are well vested when it comes to personal finance. And uh, I would like to use this opportunity to also um, thank our sponsors and our media partners. So we have uh, KPMG as a sponsor, Access Pension. We also have Prudential Life and also uh, uh, University of Ghana Business School and also our media partners. We have Joy, we have BFT, we have TV3, and then we have Home Based TV. So uh, stay tuned and follow us also on uh, our social media platform for more of this engagement. Thank you. This has been an insightful discussion, very revealing. We all need to be aware, have the right skills, have the right attitude and the right behaviors um, towards our personal finance management. Um, just reminds me of COVID times when the country was on lockdown and just food to eat was a, a struggle. If we are financially independent, it means that governments can allocate resources towards other important things. So I would encourage you to try and get financially literate. And um, it doesn't just benefit you or give you a better quality of life, but your children also benefit. Make sure you leave an inheritance for your children and your children's children, and also help them with the right skill set to make sure they are able to maintain and build on whatever you leave for them. Also, as a country, it ensures that we are able to, as I already said, allocate resources to other important areas and also make sure that we are growing the economy because we would have more businesses that come up, more employment and less crime. 
you know, on our streets. So this is very, very important. Thank you so much, Doc. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Mr. Yako, for dropping those serious gems. This April is going to be very exciting. Yeah. And I'll encourage all of us to participate in the activities that have been mentioned. Thank you so much, everybody, for, for joining us. Remember, this program is proudly brought to you by Access Pension Trust, your reliable partner in pensions. Remember to join us each and every Wednesday at 9.30 on Sunny FM. You can reach us on 0302-738-555. 0302-738-555. Or visit our website at accesspension.com. Remember to follow us on all our social media handles at Access Pension Trust. Till next time, have a wonderful week. In this COVID-19 era, many Kenyans have seen the need for a financial fallback plan. If you're looking to improve your financial situation or need reliable information to make sound financial decisions, join the Access Money Show, a weekly interactive session hosted by Access Pension Trust on Access Money. We feature industry experts to cover various personal finance topics and share the success stories of sound investment decisions. Access Money, Wednesdays at 9.30 a.m. on Sunny FM. Access Pension Trust, a reliable partner in pensions.